My name is Johnny and I make games. This is part seven of a short series looking back at my old entries to a 48 hour game competition called Ludum Dare. This one, the theme was start with nothing and for the most part, I think I <laughs> did, <laughs> did I start? Yes, I did start with nothing. And I ended up with nothing too because I think I completely went off script and the thing I made was absolutely nowhere close to anything to do with the theme. But I think that's what most people do. I'm pretty sure there's, I'm 99% I'm sure there's, there's a team of people who every single time there's a competition, regardless of the theme, make a game about g geese and it's like a shoot 'em up game with geese in the style of doom i'm pretty sure that's a thing the good news is i didn't imagine it it is in fact this um <laughs> i mean <laughs> Um, it's, <laughs> so anyway, here we go again down the rabbit hole of the old blog post to try and find the original ideas. So bear with me as I scroll for a consistent five minutes. Finally, I found it. So at this stage, I was still using the felt tip pens and physical media to actually uh, do the um, sketching stage. These were my ideas for this one. So I had like, uh, you'd have like a floating head and then you'd just go around assembling body parts until you had like a, well, that's kind of self-explanatory. The same thing with spaceships, I guess you'd start with like a, a blob then gradually accumulate stuff. I mean, that was done in a game called uh, Captain Forever, which is it was a really cool uh, online game, I think. You started out as a little sort of block with a gun on, and then you destroyed other ships and then built parts of those ships onto your ship to then upgrade and stuff. But yeah, this could have been a cool idea, I guess, but I didn't do that. Instead, I went straight for this. I don't know what this has to do with the theme. It really has nothing. Nothing to do with start with nothing. It just doesn't make any sense. Doesn't make any sense at all. I guess, I guess, I guess I just like the, the, I just liked the aesthetic, I suppose. So I did some basic sort of, um, I think some basic preliminary pixel art kind of thing, just messing around with palettes and stuff. I guess I wanted to throw in mushrooms and floaty wizard ninja ghosts. Uh, and by the way, the inspiration for this was... So let's have a look at the game and see how it evolved. So here's all the stuff. If I did the usual of uh, doing details and sorting by date. So it looks like it did start with a spaceship kind of thing. Let's find the first iteration of the actual game. Oh, right, okay. 
So I've got, got a character already. Let's see what this looks like. I think this was the first time I actually started experimenting with um, Construct 2's layer blending mode. So I was trying to figure out at this point how I could make shadows. Okay, we're cooking on gas now. So there's a bit, there's a bit of glitching, but you can see the, the basics of the effect. I can incrementally change the light level, which is simulated basically with a layer. Look at my little character now. Does the enemy do something? Does he move? Should have a look. Let's have a look at the layout. I'll just show you how everything works. So there you go. That's that's what's doing the effect. So what happens in game? You've got these blocks that are set around the outside, the circle like so, and this is scaled to then allow you to see a smaller or a larger area of illuminated scene. And then for the randomness, it's basically randomizing the angle uh, every frame, I think. So this is where I think I introduced more artwork. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, okay. I don't know what happened there. Oh, <laughs> what? Yeah, so that's that's the basic effect. And now I've got these little guys that follow me around, like so. Now, let's skip forward day two. Okay, <laughs> wait, we've gone straight from the prototype to a pretty much finished game. Let's have a look. Oh, no, moving on. So I've still got these little weird character things. Oh. I don't like this effect on the trees. It is really hard without a lighting engine that detects edges or whatever. Or that actually using vectors or polygons or something. This looks promising. It looks more like a finished version. Let me turn that down a little bit. So we have the actual proper player sprite now. The mushrooms are still kicking out loads of spores. And now, I think once you get to a certain line level, oh, oh, where are the mushrooms? Oh yeah, you can see the enemies are now little cat people. And then, depending on the line level, you can get up there. Oh. That's pretty cool. A moon in the background. I mean, the, the aesthetic is pretty cool. I can't get out of the tree though. Here you go. So the, the trees, the collision meshes, were like this. When you're walking in the trees, you you couldn't really be sure of where you were going to land. I like, I like the way how optimistic that is, calling this level one. As if I was going to make another level. Oh, what the hell? Got more weird glitching again. All the mechanics are there now. The pirate cats will try and get you and every time the pirate cats hit you you lose a light level you need to hit more mushrooms up and then get those light levels back oh, at a certain light level is when you can see the fruit on the trees to collect it so the idea is you collect the fruit from the trees and then get to your wizard tower here, yeah. I'm being trailed by cats, I need to dish the cats. Oh god. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> That's that then. So collect apples for mana. Collect mushrooms to see, avoid cats. Get home with a potion. You couldn't die. There's not a lot of um, real risk in it. There's no way to lose it, really. 
Which, uh, if I was to continue this, I would probably try come up with something else. So, for instance, if it got too dark, then that would be game over, I guess. Can I find the music? How many missing samples? Oh. Um, something I do in this one. It's a 5-4 time signature. It's that extra little bit at the end. Yes, it, oh, why is, hmm, what if I can change this then, the sound effect, that's annoying. The synth was one I made myself, and now, through the joys of upgrading FL Studio, I've lost everything, and I don't even know where, where the old one was. It's a shame. It's a shame I had to lose <laughs> lose that all because uh, I did quite like that track. I like the sort of uh, oh, good runtime error. Fantastic. So that was number seven. My entry number seven, and that was for the Ludum Dare number forty-five. Right, five more to go, I guess. See you next time.